Hey everyone, my name's David, and in this video I'm going to show you how to diagnose and then repair your Max Air Fan. Now ours just suddenly stopped working completely. You know, I press the on-off button and nothing happens. So we're going to go through a step-by-step -step on how to diagnose, you know, every single problem that could be wrong with the Max Air Fan so you can figure out exactly what is wrong with yours. Now just for your information, the model we have is the Max Air Fan that can reverse, so it can push air out through the roof and we can reverse it to come back inside. And we also have the one that has the temperature sensor on it that can hold the temperature in our travel trailer to 78 degrees. Now regardless of what Max Air Fan model you have, the steps I'm going to show you guys in this video is going to be the same. The only thing that's going to be different is maybe the button pad here or the uh, circuit board. But other than that, you, this should work just fine. And if you have a fantastic fan, I believe this should all be about the same. I've never had a, a fantastic fan or worked on one, but I just have a pretty good feeling that uh, how they work and how the Max Air fans work is pretty much the same. Now the first step in diagnosing our Max Fan is just to check the fuse. So you'll want to go to your RV's electrical panel, open that up, and for us, the fuse that powers our Max Air Fan is the accessory fuse, which uh, it's telling us that that is fuse number five. So we can go ahead and pull that fuse out and look at it, and I can see that that fuse is not blown. And actually, you notice that a little red LED turns on when a fuse is removed or when a fuse is blown. So the fact that there were no, uh, none of those red LEDs on, I already knew that uh, this wasn't the problem and that the fuse was fine, but it's still good to pull it out and inspect the fuse just to make sure that there's no problem there. And I am gonna go ahead and leave this fuse out for now, just so my Max Air Fan is de-energized and we're safe to work around the wires. Now for this next part, I'm gonna use my cordless impact driver and a multimeter. So we need to actually take some parts off of our Max Fan so that we can get to the wires to test to see if there is electrical current to the wires that power our Max Air Fan. So the first thing we do is take off this screen and it's really easy, I'm sure you guys have done this before, to clean it, you, know, you just turn these little knobs and that whole screen just pulls off. We can set this aside. And then we need to then take off this uh, plastic shroud on the outside. And uh, on my model, there are four screws that hold that on, as well as a screw in the middle of the little hand crank knob that's used to open and close the Max Air Fan. Sorry, I forgot, before we can drop down the uh, plastic shroud that sort of hides all the wires in the circuit board, we actually need to remove this plastic shroud around the whole frame of the Max Air Fan. And again, there are just four screws around that to remove this. Now we can remove the four screws from this plastic cover. Apparently there's a spacer. <laughs> I forgot about this little PVC spacer. It's, it's not really retained by anything. It just kind of gets smushed between this shroud and the top plastic shroud. So, but don't lose this. And now we can see that we've got our uh, control board right here and all of my wires, the power wires that run to the control board were just kind of shoved up in there. Now what we've got going on here is this red wire here is the power wire for our Max Air Fan. The white wires are all the ground wires. And then these wires right here are what go from the control board on the Max Fan up to the motor. So right now it's just sort of hanging from the motor wires. So I am going to just disconnect this for now so that I can set this out of the way. 
Actually, I can just hang it over on our shower head. That's nice and convenient. And next we can go ahead and take the electrical tape off of these wires. And I'm going to take the um, wire nuts off as well so that we have access to those wires. Now remember, since we removed the fuse that energizes these wires, they uh, should have no power to them. Um, now you wanna be very sure that the fuse you removed is actually the one that powers your max air fan. And I am 100% positive without a doubt that that is the correct fuse. So we'll go ahead and take those off. Now here is a sort of, I wouldn't say dangerous part, but a part where you want to be very careful because you have to go put that fuse back in so that you can test that there is power to uh, the power wires that you ground, that you then ground to the white wires to make sure that everything is working properly. So if you have someone that is working with you, you can ask them to go put that fuse in just while you sort of monitor these wires and make sure everything is safe. And definitely don't let them touch each other as well because that will short the circuit out and can cause some damage. So we need to go and replace the fuse that powers our max air fan. Now take the probes for your multimeter and place the red on the power wires and the black probe on the white wires or your ground wires. And now your multimeter should be reading about 12 volts. And if it is, then these wires are powered and this is not the issue. Hopefully your wires are powered because if they're not at this point, then you've got a really annoying problem. It means that there's a broken wire or a bad connection somewhere in the circuit, uh, then, and that's gonna be kind of annoying because chasing that down might be pretty difficult. But thankfully, we have power here, so we can continue on with the um, diagnostic steps, but we wanna go ahead and remove that fuse again to de-energize these wires so that we're safe to work. Now my lovely wife, Ro, went ahead and pulled the fuse back out to de-energize these wires. And before I start touching on them and stuff, I'm gonna take my multimeter probes again, and I'm going to touch them to each of these wires and make sure that they're de-energized, meaning there is a, vo a DC voltage of zero. And I can see that that is the case. So these wires are de-energized, confirmed to be de-energized, and we're safe to work on them. The next step in diagnosing is to make sure that your motor is working properly. And how you would do that is just apply direct 12 volt power to this uh, plug right here. And you can do that a number of ways. You can run a jumper from a 12 volt battery, you know, one, one wire from the power and one wire from the ground side of the battery direct to here. Um, or you can actually use these two wires here as well. Um, that's a little sketchy for me uh, because we've got a pretty high capacity battery bank and I'm really not comfortable myself um, re-energizing these wires and then messing around with them. Um, so like I said, a, a safer way to do that is if you have a smaller 12 volt battery on hand that you can apply direct power. Um, and if you do, then your fan will just start turning and you instantly know if it's turning, it's not the motor. Um, and another reason that I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna actually perform that step in this video uh, is because I've actually looked at my control board and I can visually see that that's the issue. We have had, you know, clearly this board has been exposed to way too much moisture and it has begun to corrode terminals on the board. So there's either some sort of shorting out going on on the board because of that corrosion or the corrosion has just completely ruined the board. So now I'm going to unwire my old MaxFan control board from these two. And again, these are de-energized, so it's all safe to touch. So I'm just going to untwist these wires and remove the two wires leading to my Max Fans control board. And there we go. And you know, I'm just gonna still sort of bend these out of the way for now. Um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the wire nuts just because, I don't know, 
I never feel like it's a very good idea to just leave bare wires out for any random reason. So we'll just leave those two covered up. And now our control board and this plastic bezel are free. So now what we can do is remove our control board. So there's only three screws holding this control board on here, here, and here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove those and it will um, just separate our control board from this plastic bezel. And something that is really annoying to me is that like moisture buildup ruined this control board. The max fan is directly over our shower. So they know that it's gonna be experiencing a lot of moisture and yet they still didn't design their control boards to be water resistant. Uh, and don't worry guys, I'll show you later on in the video how to make your new control boards water resistant so that this issue doesn't happen again. Again, it's right over the shower. Why wouldn't they do this? Anyway, and then we can remove our control board from the uh, button pad. You just pull that off. And this is the little uh, temperature sensor. We can just pull that out. There we go. And our old control board is completely free. Um, there's another chance Something else that could be an issue is this button pad could be bad as well. And I can actually see, um, I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick it up, but it does look like there might be a little bit of rust. Oh, bro, you might have to focus it. I know you're on manual focus. Just switch to auto. <laughs> camera, camera there work. It there we go. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of um, corrosion in there like wh where those like wires run on the pad um and so i have a pretty good feeling that this button pad is probably bad too and it only cost us it only cost ten dollars so i just went ahead and ordered that too um but we'll remove that later now something i did do before i just went ahead and ordered a new control board is i cleaned this old board off uh, like i said it had a lot of corrosion on it um and uh, you can see from this picture right here that it's just it, there's just so much blue corrosion all over the place and uh there's also a spot i can see on the board where a connection has just completely corroded away completely and it's just a broken free connection now so this control board's definitely bad so I did clean this board. I just used some isopropyl alcohol that we had on hand, you know, rubbing alcohol um, and a toothbrush. And, you know, I just got the toothbrush really wet and I just very gently scrubbed away at it until all of the corrosion was gone. And then I plugged this control board back in and it still didn't work. So, um, you know, if, if you don't, if while inspecting your board, if you don't see that there are any obvious broken connections, anything that's been completely corroded away, uh, you might want to do that first because you might be able to save yourself, you know, 90 or so dollars or, well, this was, our board was about $60. But yeah, you could save yourself a little bit of money if just by cleaning up your control board, uh, you know, fixes the problem. But again, for us, it didn't. So let's get rid of that thing and start working with our new board. Now here is the new control board and I've actually already prepped this with what's called a silicon conformal coating. And this is just a spray can. I picked it up on Amazon. And I'll go ahead and drop a link in the video description below so you guys can pick this up for yourself as well. I highly recommend you do it because that is what makes our new board water resistant. And so, you know, the moisture in the air from taking showers shouldn't foul out this new board and I put quite a lot of coats on this so uh yeah it's this new this this coating on this is really uh thick and I think it's really gonna do a really good job of protecting it and all I did you know we're on the road so I don't really have a good place to spray this so I just grabbed a coat hanger that we had I put it through one of uh you know the little mounting holes and then I just hung this whole thing from a from a tree branch and you know, it got the job done. It worked well. <laughs> uh, and it's also really important that you guys mask off these openings for other sensor inputs. Um, and I don't have any masking tape, so I just use electrical tape, but you know, whatever, it all works just fine. So I can go ahead and remove 
those uh, my tape now and it's insanely important that you remember this right here to mask off. These are the pins for the uh, button board. So, you know, these have to be able to uh, still uh, conduct electricity. Otherwise you're gonna, you basically just uh, killed your board. <laughs> but yeah, so now that I've applied this spray, we're water resistant and we're good to go ahead and install this control board back onto that bezel. And in the same step, we're gonna go ahead and install the new button board as well. Um, these two items I picked up from adventurerv.net is the name of the retailer. They're the only ones that I could find that had a panel or a circuit board of, that fit my Max Air Fan in stock. And I got the uh, part numbers for these just by calling a local RV dealer. They were able to find me these part numbers, but they weren't able to order them in for whatever reason. You know, they just, they said that they were out of stock everywhere. Thankfully, adventurerv.net still had them in stock. We're not sponsored by them or anything. Um, it's just the only place I could find that had these. Again, my board was about $60 and this button panel was like $10. We're gonna remove the old button panel first though before we install our new circuit board on. And it's really easy. You just gotta get under them with a fingernail or you can even use like a, a knife or you know a, a small flathead screwdriver but I was just able to peel mine up. And this is pulling up really, really easy. There, and the old button panel is off, ready for the new one. Now we're gonna go ahead and prep that surface that the new button panel goes on with some isopropyl alcohol. 91% um, is what you really wanna use to remove any of that sticky stuff. And 91% isopropyl alcohol is also what you wanna use if you attempt to fix your old control board by cleaning off any corrosion that may be on it. So just toss some of this on cotton pad and just go to town on this surface. Get off any old residue, uh, old adhesive residue and get this nice and clean for our new board. And what's nice about isopropyl alcohol, if you've never really used it, is it dries super fast. So we don't really even have to worry about um, like drying it off and waiting. Pretty much by the time you grab the new button pad, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be dry. All right, and that's it. Good. Mine looks nice and clean. Uh, it uh, peeled off extremely clean. I only had a little bit of old adhesive residue on there, uh, but it's all off now, and we're good to go ahead and put our new button pad on. Here's our old button pad, and here's our new one. They look exactly the same. So all we have to do is remove the, uh, you know protective sticker from the back that just keeps the adhesive clean. It already comes with an adhesive on it. And I don't know why, but stuff like this always makes me nervous because I'm like, you gotta get it right. You gotta get it perfect the first time because as soon as you stick it down, it's stuck on. Oh gosh, oh no. <laughs> All right, that looks good. I'm locking it in. We're going for it. No turning back. No turning back now. <laughs> All right. And we wanna make sure that it's nice. You just push down nice and firmly everywhere to make sure that that adhesive bonds with the surface everywhere. And also, of course, make sure you get this little guy in through the, the hole there before you start pressing down. But there we go. New button pad on, on to uh, putting the control board on. And I'm just gonna leave the old temperature sensor on because I don't really wanna have to mess with uh, removing the silicone and then, you know, putting it back on. So yeah, we never used the feature anyway, this uh, like auto temperature feature. Um, you know, you can see the uh, button pad has that on it right there where you can set that and uh, it holds the temperature to 78 degrees. We never use that feature uh, because, so even if there is something wrong with this temperature sensor wire, 
I don't really care. Uh, but if you want to replace it, you totally can. The control boards come with a new temperature sensor. And uh, you know what, I am gonna keep that wire because if we have an issue with that sometime down the road and we decide that we do wanna replace this, then we just will. Uh, but you know, it's whatever. So the new circuit board, I'm gonna go ahead and plug that temperature sensor in right there. And then we can plug the button pad, the new button pad into our new control board. Now we're ready to mount our control board back onto this plastic bezel. And I've got those three screws right next to me. And they each came with a little plastic washer and that goes between the head of the screw and the control board just to protect the control board from those metal screws. All right, our new circuit board is in. Our new button pad is on as well. So we can go ahead and wire this board back in and see if it all works. I'm just gonna hang all this back up over my shower head. It's so convenient. And remove the wire nuts from these two. And again, these are still de-energized. The fuse is still pulled. We actually just like quintuple checked to make sure that the fuse was still pulled. And the black wire from our control board is the positive wire. So it gets wired in with all these red wires. And you know, we just kind of twist those by hand as best as we can. Um, actually, I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm gonna redo that. Sorry, it's, it's too far at the base. I want that to be more toward the tip of all those wires. So we'll go ahead and twist those together as best we can by hand. And then grabbing our red wire nut. And bear down on that too. Okay, and then we wanna go ahead and perform a pull test. We just pull nice and hard on each of these wires individually. All right, good. None of those pulled out, so we can assume that was a pretty good connection. And then the white wire from our new control panel is the ground wire. So we can go ahead and do the same thing with all these ground wires. Gonna twist those in together by hand as best we can. Okay. And grabbing our ground wire nut. Can do the same thing. Get that in there nice and tight. And then perform a pull test here as well to make sure all these wires are in there securely. And then this plug is again for the motor. So we want to make that connection. All right. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and put the fuse back in because we're gonna test all this, see if our max fan runs. Now, as soon as my wife Ro plugged in the fuse to energize all of this, we heard a chirp. And that basically signifies to us that this now has power and it's an extremely good sign. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the max fan on. There we go. It works. And Just making sure all the buttons work too. Reversing it. Nice. All right. And you know what? I'm just gonna see if this uh, temperature thing works too because we are using the old temperature sensor. So let's see. Well, that works too. So yeah, we're good to go. And at this point, um, you know, we, we're just gonna put this all right back together. It is the exact reverse. So I'm not gonna show that, but what I am gonna show real quick is you should put electrical tape over these wire nuts. It's very important just to make sure that 
you know, it's going to help hold those wire nuts on first off, which is very important because, you know, when you're going down the road, um, you know, everything's just vibrating in here and you don't want these wire nuts to vibrate loose. So having electrical tape on that will help to hold those wire nuts on and it will also sort of help to make, you know, these wires um, moisture resistant if we get a nice, um, you know, good seal on the electrical tape because again, it's right above our shower and so, you know, there's just moisture like crazy up in here. So yeah, definitely, definitely want to get electrical tape on those. I've got a red roll of electrical tape for the positive wires because it just sort of helps indicate that, uh, you know, this is definitely the positive wires. And we'll get a nice good wrap on this. And I am sort of going overkill here. Uh, but again, I want a really good barrier for any potential moisture. And so I kind of kind of went a little heavy with the tape. <laughs> but that's okay. You saw that roll. That roll's huge. <laughs> and then I've got black electrical tape for the ground wires, you know, just to help indicate to anyone that may work on this in the future that, yes, this is absolutely the ground wires. And again, I'm just going to get a nice, thick wrap here as well. All right, there we go. I'm really happy with both of those uh, tape jobs. And again, like I said, we can now go ahead and button all this back up. And it's just the reverse of taking it off. So, and there we go. It's all put back together. And now the only thing left to do is to open this thing back up because it is actually kind of a hot day. It's like 80 degrees in our trailer right now. So now turn her on and bask. Oh, it feels so good. Yes, it works. We're good to go. This thing hasn't worked for a little while. I'm so glad we got it running now. Oh, it feels so good. And that's it for this video. That is all the steps that it takes to diagnose and repair your Max Air Fan yourself. And it's a very straightforward process and it'll save you a lot of labor costs from having an RV dealer do it. And there are links down in the description below, again, to the website where I found my control board and button panel. And there's also a link to uh, the conformal coating spray, which again, I highly recommend you guys use to uh, you know, make your control boards water resistant so that you don't have to go through all of this again. Also, there's a link down in the video description below to my wife Rose Twitch channel. You know, if you guys want to hang out with her live while she plays some video games, go ahead and follow her on Twitch. But again, that's it for this video. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Sweetie's excited because she knows what's going I know, pup. Come here. Come here. Sweetie girl, say bye. Say bye. Boom. <laughs>